Anything that increases the chance that a person will develop a certain disease during their lifetime can be called a risk factor. They don't guarantee that the person will catch disease, they just increase the chance of it happening. The concept of risk factors applies to all diseases, but in this video, we're going to focus on the risk factors for non communicable diseases, which, as we saw in the last video, are those which can't be spread from person to person, like coronary heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. Although it's difficult to categorize them, risk factors are often either aspects of a person's lifestyle or substances in the person's body or environment. For example, obesity, which is often due to poor lifestyle choices, is a risk factor for both diabetes and heart attacks, while exposure to air pollution and smoking are both risk factors for diseases like lung cancer. Often though, things are a bit more complicated, and lots of risk factors interact to influence one particular disease. For example, diet, obesity, smoking, and lack of exercise all contribute to cardiovascular disease. In other cases, certain risk factors might directly cause a disease. For example, smoking has been proven to directly cause cardiovascular disease, lung disease, and lung cancer. And we know this because the toxins in smoke can directly damage the walls of our blood vessels and the cells that line our lungs. Meanwhile, drinking too much alcohol can cause liver disease. And either smoking or drinking while pregnant can cause a whole range of health problems for the unborn baby. Other direct links include obesity, which itself can be caused by poor diet and lack of exercise, and can go on to cause type 2 diabetes, and cancer, which can be caused by exposure to substances like asbestos or radiation. One of the problems with diseases is that they don't just affect the individual who has the disease. They also impact their family, friends, and sometimes their entire country. For example, when somebody gets ill, they often rely on their friends and family to support them. And if they're really ill, they might not be able to work, which means that their whole family gets poorer. On a national scale, if there's more disease, then the workforce will be less productive, and a bigger share of government spending will have to be spent on health. In order to try and reduce this burden of disease, scientists first need to find out who catches each type of disease and why. And what they found is that certain groups of people are more likely to have certain risk factors than others. And so those groups have a higher incidence of the associated diseases. For example, globally, people in developed countries like the UK, with higher incomes, are more likely to eat too much unhealthy food and live a sedentary lifestyle where they don't exercise enough. And risk factors like these are part of the reason that obesity and its associated diseases are such a problem in developed countries like the UK. Meanwhile, on a national scale within the UK, people from more deprived areas are more likely to smoke, have a poor diet, and not exercise enough. So we see more cases of cardiovascular disease and obesity in those deprived areas. The key takeaway from this video is that there are loads of risk factors that affect the chances of us getting a disease. But although many of them are out of our control, lots of them aren't, and the choices that we make have a big impact on how healthy we end up being. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.